Hey everybody, Adam Savage here. It is summertime. Summer means cooking outside. To a lot of people, it means cooking meat outside. And one of the most hotly debated aspects of cooking meat outdoors is the finish, the sear. People tend to say that you want the hottest possible sear. That is what we're here to test today. I'm standing next to James Beard, award-winning food writer and managing culinary director of Serious Eats, Kenji Lopez-Alt. Kenji, we're going to test the sear on steaks today, is that um, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is going to be awesome. We're doing four methods? Uh, four methods, yeah. So we're basically just testing the sear. Um, so, you know, we, we don't care about the internal, anything like that. We're just testing about um, how to get the best possible sear and whether whether hotter is really better for that. Okay, and and, and in order to have a level playing field, you've pre-prepped the steaks. Yes, so we've, prep, we've prepped all the steaks. We've um, We've cooked them sous vide, okay. um, so in a water bath, and we've cut them all out of the same piece of steer. So they are all basically identical up to this point. So the only thing that we have to do left on them is to add that brown crust, add that finish. So they're ready to go. They're ready to go. Yeah. All right, let's check them out. Okay. All right, Kenji, so you, you're prepping the steaks we're going to sear today, yes? Yes, so, so we're cooking them sous vide. So the idea is that we want to make sure that they're all pretty much identical before we start searing them. Um, same internal temperature, right. same exterior. So really, this is just about the searing. So yeah, I have them all cooking in this water bath. They've been cooking for about an hour. Um, and the temperature you're cooking them uh, at? 123 degrees, three degrees Fahrenheit. So they, they should come out, by the time we're done searing them, they should come out. Medium rare, rare yeah. to medium rare, something around there. I don't, I don't know how you like your meat. But. I, I like it. As, <laughs> I like it. However, the chef would cook it for themselves. Um, so yeah. So, I mean, I'm sure you've seen sous vide steaks before, yeah. but they they don't come out looking pretty from the bag. No, they don't. Yeah. They come out looking way too uh, way too pink. But that pink is and that gray, is cooked meat. Yeah. Well, yeah. It, it's as cooked as a medium rare steak would be. Yeah. Um, it, do, it just doesn't have the sear on the exterior. It's unfinished, and yet this is totally edible. It's totally safe to eat. Uh, it is, yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, I mean, raw steak, you know, raw steak is safe to eat. <laughs> we, 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 didn't, we didn't even, we did not hit pasteurization, pasteurization temperatures here, yeah. so it is. Um, but yeah, it, it, the internally, it should have the texture of a medium rare steak. So this is great because that means that all of our steaks start from precisely the same uh, cooking point, which means exactly. all we're going to be comparing is the searing treatment on the outside. Yes, um, and so yeah, so we're putting on paper towels because you want to make sure you start with a really dry surface when you're trying to sear because. So the dryness of the steak is really important for searing? It is, yeah. So, so, you know, so when you're searing a steak, there's basically you know, three different buckets where that energy is going into, and it's, it's browning, it's heating, browning, and dry, and evaporating the excess moisture. And evaporating the excess, excess moisture takes a lot of that energy. I mean, way more than I think people realize it does. So okay. um, patting the steaks dry really carefully. Um, you know, if, if, if you're not cooking sous vide and you're starting with uh, just a raw steak, um, leaving it in the fridge on a rack uncovered overnight so that the surface dries out um, will will drastically improve the, the way it browns, the rate at which it browns. Fascinating, I did not realize that. So what is your preferred treatment of steaks? This is pretty straightforward. I, I just like salt and pepper, you know. Um, if, I, if I was pan searing, I would sear in a little, um, a mixture of oil and butter. I'd probably add the butter in closer to the end so that um, all those milk cat solids don't burn. Oh, um, okay. But um, yeah, when I'm grilling a steak, it's basically just salt and pepper, you know, because especially if you've got nice meat um, or if you get aged meat, this is not aged, but if you get aged meat, like you want to you really taste the meat yeah. um, and not the seasoning. So salt and pepper, I think, is the way to go. It smells good. Well, I'm getting hungry. Let's get okay. to the grill. <laughs> Kenji, will you educate me a little bit on what is the sear on the steak? And let's start with the popular misconception that the sear seals in the juices. Right, right. Um, searing doesn't seal in juices. Um, it's really easy to test. Um, sear, you know, sear one side of a steak, flip it over, let it cook for a long time, and eventually you're going to see juices start bubbling out that sealed, seared surface. Right. Searing doesn't seal the surface. Really, it's just about adding texture and flavor. So when you're searing, you know, the main thing that's going on is Maillard browning, the browning mm -hmm. reactions that take place with proteins and carbohydrates that, that give it that brown flavor. Can you um, explain that in more detail? <laughs> well, I can't because it's not, it's not really a fully understood process, but oh. basically what you're doing is you're, you're breaking down um, the proteins and the, and the carbohydrates into smaller and smaller pieces. There's this cascade of chemical reactions that creates all new compounds, Ooh. adds complexity, adds flavor. Um, so, you know, so what is maybe a few hundred compounds becomes a few thousand and compounds and that's what adds that really nice brown. It's what adds like the flavor to roasted coffee, the crust on a piece of bread or a piece of toast, um, and you know, a good steak. Um, so we're also dehydrating a little bit, so we're gonna get that exterior crispy. Mm -hmm. um, and then finally, we're, we're doing basically all outdoor methods here, so all, cooking all with infrared heat as opposed to conduction, which is what happens in a pan. Um, and with, with that kind of heat, um, you end up with a lot of sort of singed fat, and that's sort of that characteristic outdoor grilled kind of smoky charred flavor. So there's some amount of charring going on as well. Um, and th those are the main things that we're looking for here. Um, so the question is, you know, 
if we get too hot, it's possible that maybe we'll singe too much and you end up with a burnt tasting steak. Um, or, or maybe you, you end up browning before you have enough time to you know, develop uh, a crust that's significantly thick to give us texture. So uh, I don't know the answer to that. Maybe, maybe, maybe hotter is better. You know, maybe, maybe cook, yeah, cooking your steak on the surface of the sun is the best way to get a good crust. <laughs> but, but we're, and we're right back to this thing of like the, 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 the sous vide may have taken some of the guesswork out about the inside, but it still comes down to this a, a finesse of understanding from the cook about the, uh, the stopping point. Right, right. Where uh -huh. to stop, where's too much, where's too little, and getting that Goldilocks area right in between. Exactly, yeah. All right, it's time to talk the actual cooking methods we're using to sear our steaks, and we're gonna go in order from lowest temperature to highest temperature. First up, this is a device I have in my house, and I love it. Yeah, it's called the Sears All. Um, and it's, well, you can see it's on. It's right. essentially, um, all, the Sears All is actually this bit on the top of the flame. This is just a standard torch. And a standard um, uh, nozzle for yep, that Yep, standard yeah. nozzle. And then this fits on top and, oops, and you don't want to touch it. <laughs> um, basically, all it does is it, um, it spreads out the heat over this grill, and it also sort of um, uh, makes, makes it burn more efficiently, so you don't get any of those. Um, if, you, if you use just the torch head, you can get some kind of propane-y flavors on, right. the, on the meat. Um, this helps it burn more efficiently and, and it puts spreads out, out that heat. And a wide flame. Exactly. I really like mm -hmm. it for that. And it, it's sort of, it, am it's I like right? a handheld broiler. A handheld salamander. salamander. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So you're gonna put it on the steak like that to get that sear. Yeah, exactly. Um, and you know, we're gonna be searing probably from about an inch away, and at that range, um, it, it'll the air temperature will probably be around like 600 degrees or so, maybe a little bit hotter. Um, of course, you know what. What really matters is not necessarily air temperature. What matters is the is heat flux, how much energy we're putting onto the surface of that how steak. How much is being radiated um, out? Yeah, exactly. The so state, there's right. radiation energy as well okay. going in there. Um, it's difficult to perfectly account for all those things without um, without better instruments. But <laughs> but um, but generally, this is this is probably going to be the weakest heat source of the ones that we're testing today. Okay. Oh, and you're just going to do it on this rack here? Yeah, yeah, directly on the rack. So you can you can do it indoors or outdoors. Um, you want to you do want to let it preheat a little bit, um, and. You want to do two at once or just one uh, at a time? One at a time. Okay. And honestly, only part of one at a time because right. you know, your, your cooking area is only maybe four square inches or so. And it really is, the, the end of the sears all is all built to distribute that heat to a wide range. Setting. Exactly. Okay. Well, relatively wide. Yeah. Relatively wide range. Wider than the nozzle of a blowtorch. Yes, by yes. By far. Okay, so we're, we're going to kind of pass over the surface back and forth so that we get a nice even. It's sort of like painting, you know, you want to... You want to overlap your layers so that you get you get a nice even cook. But like a painter, what is it exactly that you're looking for as you're going? What are your guides? Well, for me, it's it's just going to be about the, the level of browning. Um, so so all the steaks will stop when I think they, they get to the point where they're browned but not uh, blackened. You know, there, there'll still be a few little singe portions here and there. Um, right. Particularly like the black pepper will singe. Parts of the the fat that are sticking up over the surface of the meat will probably singe a little bit. Now with, um, with the uh, sears all, are you going to get one side totally done and then move to the other side? Yes, or are you going to exactly. alternate? Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is unlike a normal cooking where you're flipping regularly. The sears all is just one side and then the other. Yes, exactly. Um, but it's, it's going relatively fast. It is. We're getting close. And to be clear, we're not cooking the steak with the sears all. We are finishing the steak. It has right. already been cooked in sous vide. Yes, the steak okay. is already a perfect uh, medium rare inside. We're just browning the surface here. That is amazing. It looks magnificent. It okay, smells let's, good uh, too. Well, do you want to do the second side? Sure. All right. Let me uh, let me start the timer so we get an All idea. Right. Here we go. Wow! I can see. Normally, the side that's cooking is away from you. Yeah. So it's, you can really see what happens. I, it's it's neat the little like the little bubbles that uh -huh. that uh, suddenly burst open and set, and it's you know it's basically um, what you're what you're seeing is the same as uh, on the surface of a piece of bread as it bakes. Um, really. How um, little bubbles of gas and vapor inside will cause um, will will expand from the heat. Um, right. Right. And right. then as as the as the as the sort of protein membrane outside them thins out. Um, it becomes thin enough that it sets very quickly. Um, oh, I might so, have gotten a little too oh, that's hot. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's all right. Okay. All right, so we're at just about a minute here. I think, I think, I think we're pretty we're close. Good. So maybe yeah. do the edges? Yeah, we'll, so I'll, we'll flip this up and do the edges. So let's assume that first side also took about a minute, and so okay. we're at just about two minutes now. That's faster than I thought this would be. Actually, yeah, process. it is. Yeah, it is, yeah. Yeah. 
How do you feel about that? I think we're good. All right. And, uh, finally the, the fat. Yeah, and this one you want to really be careful because that fat will have a tendency to flare up and burn pretty fast. And pulling back just a tiny bit. So that took a total of about three minutes. You want to cut into it? Yeah, let's totally do that. Here we go. The first experimental steak of the day. Okay. Nice color on there. It is, it's beautiful. Mmm. Nice and tender. I mean, the, I mean, the inside is, is perfectly cooked, which we, yep. which we already knew going in. <laughs> we totally did. The outside has some crisp to it, some sweetness, not too much smoky. Mm -hmm. And like a, I mean, a super thin layer of, almost no, almost no gray band on that at all, almost yeah. no overcooked meat at all. It's funny, I see that in restaurant steaks a lot. The, band the gray band, yeah, yeah. It's very, very thin. Especially at like traditional steakhouses where they're, cooking over high heat the entire time, and so you end up with a really big temperature gradient in the inside. Mm-hmm. Mm. Oh, that's lovely. Mm -hmm. With this method, you, you don't get a lot of the um, sort of singed fat flavor. Like, it, do, it doesn't mm -hmm. taste like a grilled steak to me. Right, 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 right. It tastes like, right. A, like a broiled steak, which, well, which is essentially what it is. So you don't, you don't get any of that kind of smoky, singed flavor. Interesting. But it's crunchy. It is. Just texture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's good. You guys want some? Yeah, you do. Come on. <laughs> you can come have some. <laughs> All right. Method number two, grilling on the grill. Yes. This is what the, the way that most people would probably do it. Um, so I got a two-zone fire here, basically all the, all the coals on one side. And I like to do that just in case things start to get like engulfed in flames. You can move everything over to this side and, and you know, a little bit more control that way. Have easier temperature management. Yep. Okay. So we're gonna do the same sort of. Gonna do two at once. Um, yeah, let's do two at once. Okay. We got, we got enough space here. And we'll start let's the timer. Start the timer. This is gonna. What do you think? This is gonna take four or five minutes to get um, this going. Or? Maybe, maybe. Yeah. You know, the, yeah. These. This isn't. This isn't the hottest fire you can possibly get on one of these grills. So yeah, maybe maybe a four or five minutes. I think okay. you could probably you could probably cut that time down if. Uh, if you had a little bit, a few more coals lit at the same time, but. And you turn on average about every 20 seconds, 15, 15 seconds? 15, 20 seconds, yeah, yeah, yeah. I like to fiddle with my meat, you know, it's, uh, some people, some people say only flip once, um, right. but you get, you get more, um, you, you actually get the same, same sort of efficiency in browning um, and a little bit more even cooking by flipping multiple times. Right, right, right. Because you're allowing one side to rest repeatedly while at the same time you're applying heat to the Exactly. Uh-huh. Ooh. That's looking pretty cool right away. Yeah, so it's pretty browning. Starting to brown, yep. You can see some sizzling, sizzling on the surface going yeah, on. Yeah. So Kenji, what's the temperature range of the grill right now? Well, you know, it, it, there's a lot of factors in here. So on, it depends on the on the, the wind outside, it right. depends how many coals you have exactly. But I would guess like around around the searing surface, probably in the six to 700 degree. So not too dissimilar from the not, sears all. Yeah, a little bit hotter probably, but not, um, not hugely hotter. Okay. Well, that is why this is method number two. It's slightly hotter than the Searsol. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Do you do a lot of this over the summer? Outdoor grilling, grill cooking. Yeah, yeah. I'll do grill, grilling definitely. Yeah. Um, I don't. I, I don't actually cook a lot of meat. I don't like my. We. I cook a lot of meat for work, but we yeah. don't really eat actually much meat. So um, this grill sees more, more fish and vegetables than steaks. Yeah, it's the same thing in our house actually. Yeah. We grill red meat about once a, every couple months. Yeah. Most. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it is not, you know, those those times when you do grill meat, it's nice to know the best way to do it. Okay, we're getting we're getting some good browning now. We're at 240. Okay. Probably take another, I think another minute, maybe. All right. I think, you think we're almost there? I think these, oh. I think that surface looks pretty good. That's beautiful. Now we'll, now we'll just do the sides. So with two steaks, I just like this. 
stack them. The sides. I, I know. I don't often think of cooking the sides of my steaks. Yeah. Well, particularly the you know the fat side. You don't want all that soft fat there. Right. Um, you know this this is another case of where I think um, we might find that um, with temperatures that are too high, you'll end up burning that fat before you can really sort of soften it and render it. Interesting. Um, so, so that then that's a negative. That could be a negative. Yeah. 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 Oh, look at that. That is gorgeous. I don't mind being enveloped in smoke and heat <laughs> for this process. It's I'm sure your, your, your dogs will appreciate your smell when you get them. <laughs> they will. Yeah, we don't want... You generally don't want to let it get engulfed in a ball of flames. No. It, no, it, it, it deposits kind of like sooty flavors onto it. You know, a little bit of that is okay, but too much of it is yeah, yeah. It's not good. All right. I, think we're, I think we're good here. Those guys are done. Oh, they look beautiful. Yeah, so we'll... Uh, pretty good browning there. All right, so we'll cut into one. All right. Straight away. May you I wanna, cut? Yeah, go for it. Cool. Okay, yeah. And think, like you said, with sous vide, it's going to bloom there, right? It's exactly, yeah. It'll get redder it. as it as it sits after cutting. All right. I just that. All right. Yeah, that little piece of fat. Let's see here. It's a nice flavor. It's a little. It's a little smoky. Mm -hmm. Not super smoky. Um, I think actually not a huge amount of. I don't get a huge amount of crispness to it. No, it's not a significant amount of crispy, and I can definitely texturally taste that. Sort of wide cooked range at the yeah at the, at the other side. Mm -hmm. Although it's still it's still small enough that it doesn't it doesn't bug me. It doesn't taste mm -hmm. like there it doesn't taste like there's a big you know cotton dry cottony like the, the overcooked steak taste. That's terrific. Yeah. All right. Method number three. We are going to be cooking right on top of this chimney. Yeah, exactly. So uh, we have the chimney that's full of coals. Mm -hmm. um, they are getting hot right now, and then we're putting this grate directly on top. So. This method, um, you know, we'll probably only be able to cook one steak at a time on here, but it should be significantly hotter than just the, the grill alone. Terrific. <laughs> Don't hurt yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna put this on and then we'll start a timer just so that we have an idea of how long this takes. There you go. And just like all of them, we're gonna flip every 15 seconds or so and cook till it's done. Oh, it smells good all right. That's a hot. That is pretty hot. Yeah. That is, I can see the smoke coming off. It's uncharacteristic of normal grilling. Yeah. 15 seconds. Woo, that Look is hot. Look at that. <laughs> that is like commercial perfect grill marks on that. Yeah. Wow. Although for me, you know, grill marks are an aesthetic thing. I don't think they always signify better flavor, though. I, my, my father worked in commercials. He's a director. He said his first job in commercials was painting the grill lines on yeah. the hamburger. <laughs> Um, like here, for example, you see like the grill marks are dark, but the rest is kind of pale. So right. for, for me, like the best looking grill marks are the ones that have high contrast, but high contrast means that you have some overcooked sections and some under, under seared sections, I think. But oh, this is looking pretty good. Look at good. you, you've gone and done the, the, yeah. the, the cross hatch. Well <laughs> the done. The magic cross hatch, yeah. Well, that is fast. Oh, it smells great. All right, we're just coming up on a little over a minute. Yep. Um, let me, I think our, Oh, your surface, that's like that pretty looks good, perfect. right? Yeah, let's, that let's looks... Let's get our edges a little bit. Oh, nice. Get the fat going. Yeah. I'm getting hungry, which is good. I'm going to be eating steak today. <laughs> wow, that is... That is really that's hot. That's fast, yeah. <laughs> We're at 1 minute 30 seconds right now. That's, that's okay. very fast. Okay. I think we're I think we're good on that guy. Okay. Put him there. There we go. That was 142. Okay. Okay. So yeah. So typically, when you um, sear a steak like uh, in a pan or you're, or you're or on a grill and you're doing a more traditional method, you would let it rest mm -hmm. a while before cutting into it. Um, with sous vide, you don't really need to rest because you don't have that huge temperature gradient oh, right, inside. Of course not. Um, so you can basically just sear it and serve it. Cut um, right into it. Yeah. Okay. So let's see how this looks on the inside. Pretty, uh, so pretty thin layer of um, 
of sear. Of sear, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and if, I think if we, if, we, if we let it bloom for about 15 seconds, that redness will, will come out more um, in the center. But do you want to taste it? I do. I totally do. Okay. All right. That is a... So we're mainly just tasting for that sear right now. Mmm. It's cooked perfectly. I think, um... Mm -hmm. How do you like it? It's terrific. It's got some crunch to it. It's got a little smoke, but not too, not too smoky. Um, a sweetness, too. Yeah, well, that's, that's, that's the natural, that's natural sweetness from the beef. Um, yeah, I, I, I personally think it might be... No, it's pretty crunchy. I was gonna say yeah. maybe you could use a little bit more crunch, but this is pretty, pretty good texture. That's really lovely. Mm. Mm -hmm. Upside of the chimney method, fast. Downside, mm -hmm. one steak at a time. Yeah, multiple multiple chimneys. Right. <laughs> four chimneys, four steaks, mm -hmm. one rack. Yeah, we could do that. But it's fast, you know. Like if you're pan searing, if you're pan searing two steaks, it's gonna take you ten minutes to do it anyway. Right. So on the chimney, you get a minute per steak and. This one's probably still hot and ready to serve. Mm. All right. Fabulous. All right, we saved the hottest for last. This is a homemade aluminum forge. It gets over 1,200 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm gonna pull off this cover. You can see it is raring to go, and we're gonna cook some steaks. Here we go. All right, ready? Yep. Okay. Woo! Ooh, oh, okay. whoops. Okay, oh. that's not good. <laughs> I, I killed some of your we grass. We didn't like that, that spot anyway. There that's we right. go. We're yeah. gonna pull it out. Um, okay, so. Timer's nope. going. All right, you want to start the timer? I will start the timer, yep. Up? Here we go. Ready? Yep. I was expecting, like, more to happen yeah. when you put that out. <laughs> Raising Inferno, I yeah. I wanted it to get I'm, more I'm sure it'll, oh. it'll get going. What are we at? 12, 13, 14. 15 seconds. That seems... Yeah. Pretty similar to the chimney in terms the of the chimney. amount of browning after 15 seconds. Maybe, maybe a little more. You know, the chimney, we did let this preheat, the grill preheat, so uh, we got yeah. bigger grill marks. It's um, true. But I think we should mostly be focusing 30 on the space seconds. between the grill marks. Yeah, oh man. <laughs> oh, look at that. That's almost burning. Uh, okay, I think that side is more than done. <laughs> wow. And 40 seconds. Woo. That side, I think, is done. Okay, shoot. Let's, do Let's the, uh, uh, oh yeah, right, the sides. The edges. <laughs> You okay there? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's just blowing right on me. <laughs> All right, that's done. Whew. This is definitely coming in at the fastest of all the cooking methods. We're just at like one minute right now. <laughs> okay, well, I think we're, we are beyond done on. All right, uh, let's cook a second one. Let's cook a second to one, have yeah, our, just to, and, all I'll, right. and I'll try and, <laughs> maybe I'll flip it a little bit sooner this time. Okay. Oh man, okay. I'm retiming it. Look at this, you can see the, uh, the steam coming off, yeah. the vapor coming off that side right totally. there. Totally. Eight seconds. There we go. No, that's Look, grill yeah, marks. <laughs> those are some grill marks, man. Ooh, it's getting too hot here. Seventeen, twenty seconds. Yeah. So now we're flipping every ten seconds instead of every fifteen. Yeah, I and mean, and that's already probably. Look at those. You still maintain perfect grill marks. <laughs> wow. Thirty-three seconds, and the second steak's almost done. This is awesome. You know, I used to have a job in which the final experiment was always the over the top one. <laughs> there we go, 50 seconds and we're okay, done. More, yeah, we're, we're more than done on that. Um, so we get these on the cutting board? Yeah, that was by far the fastest of all the cooking methods. All right, moment of truth. Okay. Let's cut into this puppy. Which one should we do? Let's do this guy. All right. We'll cut a few slices. Now, you know, as I would expect, the, the amount of cooked area is very, very thin. There's, yeah, almost, it's basically- It's paper thin. Just the outside is brown and then, and then the entire rest of the area is sort of medium rare. Mm -hmm. All right, yeah. thank you very much. I mean, delicious. Let's just start mm -hmm. off there. It's good. It's a good cut. 
I, I get, I get, I definitely get a little more bitterness, like a little more kind of burned. Absolutely. And bits. you know, I'm looking forward to testing all the others cut together, but side by side. Mm -hmm. But frankly, of all these four, my favorite is the chimney. It had the kind yeah, of the, the, the highest level of crispiness and the best sort of sweet, crunchy ratio. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I would definitely agree. Um, yeah, I think you know, I think this one is pretty good for people who, who, um, who kind of like that that sort of singed bitter flavor. Mm -hmm. um, but the, yeah, the you know, it's sort of like a French fry that this tastes to me sort of like a French fry that's only been fried once, where there's a the layer of crispiness is like sort of paper, paper thin, so it right, very right. quickly kind of dissolves, and you don't you don't. You know, I, I prefer a slightly more substantial crunch. And that's the most substantial crunch we got today was the chimney. Was the chimney, yeah. Of all the four methods. Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, the, the forge is, I mean, it's funny to me to finish with the forge, because like I said, right. you know, I, <laughs> I had a show in which the final experiment was always the over-the-top one, and that's definitely <laughs> the most over-the-top way to cook a steak and match. We did it in less than a minute. Right. To do yep. the finishing. <laughs> um, but, you know, at, at some cost. I think the cost was it's finished really fast. It looks great, but from a textural standpoint, it's yep. not as good as the yep. uh, chimney. It's not. It's not. I am. I, I, I am. I, 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 how do you feel about this experiment? <laughs> is, has it taught you something? Um, yeah. I mean, you know, honestly, I think I think it was pretty expected that, that, that I think that's what we would get. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but no, but I think it's great that you know that the, the best met, met, the best method turned out to be something that people can do at home. Yes, which is great. I, I mean, appreciate that. You can make the best steak at home, and and we know that. <laughs> and a, a lot of people say, oh, the hotter the better, the hotter the better, the hotter the better. Not always and true. We yeah. I think we've disproven that here that there is a bandwidth under which you you want to get right. you yep, know, there's not a sweet too spot. hot, and you have more time to get that crispiness. Exactly. That's great. I have never gotten so full so fast <laughs> for science. Thank you, Kenji. Thank you. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Oh, right. This right. is the final, the final, final. Um, now, we, we tasted, we cooked two steaks in every method. Yes. And we tasted them when they came right off of that method. Right, so we got right. a good hot steak. These have been sitting for a while, but we now get to cross compare them yes, one exactly. after the other. And we'll be able to look at the color inside. You know, visually, you can see there's a difference. The one, the one with the sears all, it yeah. has like a sort of more mahogany brown color as opposed to the ones that went directly over the coals, yeah. which have a sort of darker, blacker color. And that that's all from that the, those drippings that are singeing and depositing sooty oh. things onto the surface of the meat, and that's what makes them those ones taste a little bit smokier. But. And the grill marks on the chimney are, are by far nice, the loveliest yeah. grill marks. Yeah, I yeah, I mean, the ones on the forge came out pretty nice too, but I think... Yeah, if, if grill marks are your thing, the chimney I think has the nicest. It, it, plus, it's the it's the the dark grill marks with the the sort of the the more mahogany, yeah. warm color of you get the a little bit of both. On, yeah, it's cool. yeah. All right, so oh. let's I'm gonna let's cut into each one of these like okay. sort of down the middle, and we'll let them we'll let them bloom for about 15 seconds so that we can see that um, the color difference in them. Okay. Um, and and this is this is you know as I mentioned before one of the things with sous vide steak is that the color tends to sort of evolve as it sits cut, um, hmm. more so than a, than a steak cooked by a traditional method. Interesting, I, did not, I didn't know that. Look at that, it's turning red right as we're staring at yeah. it. Yeah, yep. Okay, so. So, uh, as expected, yeah, it's, well, it's, it's hard I mean, to they, see. They all have a pretty yeah. <laughs> small gray band, I mean, it's really hard to say, actually. They're, they're all yeah. pretty good. Like this one, I mean, maybe you can see a slightly wider. So, I mean, yeah, so what we're examining right now is the temperature gradient. Inside, right, so the edge would be, would be uh, had, having been cooked at a hotter temperature would not be as red as, exactly. the, as the rest of it. Right, exactly. Um, and so generally, you know, with, with, a, with a steak that you cook over relatively um, low temperature methods, mm -hmm. um, uh, you'll, you'll see a, 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 a distinct gradient where it's pink in the center and it pr slowly progresses to gray on the outside. Right. This one we did sous vide with the fast sear, so you see pink almost all the way edge to edge and very little gray on the outside. I, none of them really have much gray. Maybe the, I think maybe this one has the most gray. And that would make sense. That's that the grill that was the longer cooking Exactly, process. yeah. This was four minutes, if I believe. If yeah, this was... Four minutes, one minute, I think two minutes. And this was... Uh, I, I think three minutes. Yeah. Yeah, I think it was... Yeah, one, two, three, four minutes, and okay. So should we taste them side Let's by side? Let's taste now? them. <laughs> I'm totally dying to. So why don't we cut a couple of small chunks from each one so we can taste them in succession? Yes. Okay. okay. That's a good idea. Okay. That is a beautiful little chunk. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. All right. Ready? Yeah. So we start with the with think, the salsa. Yeah, I think we start with the sears all. Okay. Oh, it's not too cool. It's still a little warm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's good. It has like a nice, nice clean flavor. Mm-hmm. It's hard to judge texture at this point because all the all the crust is gone. That's true. All right. That's in there. Here comes grill. the grill. A little more of that smoke. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot more actually. I yeah. mean, it's not it to going? its detriment, but I can taste the smoke. Yeah, it tastes like a grilled steak as opposed to a grilled mm-hmm. steak. Time for the chimney. All right, chimney. This was previously my favorite. I think it's still my favorite. Mm-hmm. There is more. Um, there's like definitely a very distinct smokiness with like char to it now. Mm-hmm. Mm. And it's um. It's on a wider bandwidth, right? You, mm-hmm. I can taste that that the, the greater surface that's got that got the char, mm-hmm. or the thickness. And actually, this one I, I still even get a little bit of texture to it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It's still um, my favorite. Okay. All right, that's still the favorite. Let's go for the forge. Mm. It's by far the smokiest. Yeah, I, bordering on bordering on burnt tasting. I mean, Mm-hmm. It's like when you get a pizza that's artfully charred, as opposed to, as opposed to, opposed to burn. I mean, some people like that. Um, I would not complain if somebody served this to me. Not <laughs> Any at of all. Them actually. No, no. These are. Let's, let's be clear. These are all really, really delicious steaks. Um, and it is only by a small matter of degrees. If I was rating this on a scale of one to ten, I'd say these were, like, all the same number. With this being maybe like, you know, if these were all eights, that's a nine. Yeah, or an eight point five. Yeah, 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 exactly. It's very yep. close. Yeah, but I but I think that's the one. That's the one, which and is pe- nice and convenient. People can do that in their house. You can you can cook yourself, well, preferably outside their house. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> no barbecuing indoors. We don't need to shoot an experiment <laughs> to prove that that's bad. But uh, the chimney comes out on top. Yeah, delicious, Kenji. Thank you so much thank you. for this, for this experiment. <laughs> that was illuminating and filling. I think it's time for a nap. Yes. Come and get it.